They are back, and they want more. All of the power guys are back in the lineup in this one. The only changes is that Ted Williams is in for Jim Edmonds, which is good because Ted Williams has much better hitting stats in general. And Samarja is on the hill once again. So I was hoping I could start another home run derby just like in the last Moonshot Squad episode. If you saw the lineups at the beginning, you may have seen this Diamond Dynasty player thinking, what the fuck? Check out this bastard! At the plate, Tiny Dick off the plate with the fastball. It's one and one. Oh, and there's a drive to deep left center. You can pretty much forget about this one. This is way out of here. The ugliest man to ever step foot on planet Earth gives me a taste of my own medicine. So that was not the plan from the beginning to go out there and start dishing out home runs from my opponent. It was supposed to be the other way around, so I needed to bounce back quick. And man, I was I was losing it when I first saw that motherfucker come to the plate. Like I haven't played one of these guys in a while. Who goes out there and you make your Diamond Dynasty player look like the ugliest sad sack on planet Earth. And it is just hilarious and distracting because all you can do is just laugh your ass off every single time somebody like that comes to the plate. So yeah, I mentioned the only difference uh, in the squad in this game is that Ted Williams is in for Jim Edmonds. I mean, I think I did pretty decent if I remember cor if I remember correctly. I think I did all right with Jim Edmonds in that last game. I think I went one for four or something with him with a double, I think it was. But Ted Williams has been playing pretty good, especially lately off the bench. When I've been bringing him in as a pinch hitter, he's been doing amazing in one of the games. A couple games ago, I think he had a big home run. I think, I forget what happened, but I just remember he had a big home run. So it was good to get Ted Williams back in the lineup since... I mean, ever since I took him out of the starting lineup too, holy shit, every single time I put him in as a replacement for somebody, he's been doing so bad in the field, like, it was the longest span when he came and joined the squad, made the debut and all that shit, he played so many games, I played him every single game pretty much, and he never made a single error, and then the last, you know, couple weeks when I put him in as a replacement for somebody, he's been making errors everywhere you look, m embarrassing myself out there in the outfield, so... I wasn't doing shit at the beginning beginning of this game. I mean, with the offense, I mean, like I was doing, I was doing pretty decent with Samarja on the mound. Other than that uh, home run I gave up to that uh, the the goat, I guess I should say, since he went out there and hit one to the moon. But yeah, I wasn't able to do jack shit. I mean, A Rod just popped up. Still have Andre Ethier in the lineup, which there was no chance I was taking this guy out. He went four for five. Hit one to the moon as well. Him and Grady Sizemore in that game had mammoth shots. It was insane. But not able to get anything in the second either. So this is not this is not looking good right off the bat. Going into the uh, top of the fourth. Yeah, top of the fourth. Or top of the third. What am I even saying? Top of the third. We are in, I think I said it was a third. But that, that was the second inning. But we are in the third now. And this motherfucker is up again. Driven out to deep left center field. Looking up is Williams. And goodbye. This one ain't coming back. Look at this guy. He's coming out here and putting on a show. Two home runs already. You know he's going to be back up a couple more times in this one. This is going to get out of control. This motherfucker may have to be pitched around in the future in this game. Because he was just, he was all over me. I didn't even know what the hell to do against this guy after that at bat. I mean, Jesus, couldn't even squeeze in a fastball or anything to this guy. He was, he must have been sitting fastball or something because there were a lot of off-speed pitches. He was swinging early on and for some reason, for some stupid reason, I was throwing heaters to that guy and he goes deep again. So this guy may be the GOAT. The ugliest motherfucker on the planet may be the GOAT. And he's trolling me right off the bat, man, with this ugly Diamond Dynasty player and he goes... Two for two, right out of the gates with two home runs. He is trolling me to the max. So that was it for Samarja. Bad decision. Pujols, sit your ass down. I'm sick of seeing Pujols, man. He fucking stinks. I may never use Pujols again after that shit, man. He strikes out every single time or he just flies out or hits a weak little dribbler to the pitcher, seems like. But this guy's able to get another home run on the board with Joey Votto, I think that was. So this guy is turning the tables in this game the plan was I was supposed to go out here and just be hitting home runs everywhere you look this guy was doing that to me so I needed to do something and do something quick
Ted Williams is starting this inning off with a single, a rocket right by the second baseman. So now Prince Fielder is up. He has been doing amazing since he made the debut. And with that good power, you know he is just due. He is just waiting to do something big. Now here's a ball hit in the air to straightaway right field. This ball's got plenty of carry to it, and it is out of here. Prince comes through. That is huge, man. That is huge to get some runs back on the board. This guy could have possibly ran away with this one after those early home runs. Luckily, all those were solo shots, or this already could have been out of control if there were some guys on base for him. But, I mean, I was able to settle down. I mean, I got a couple... Uh, or actually, when I brought in Kelvin Herrera is when I started to settle down on the mound a little bit because he was all over Samarja. That's kind of why I took him out. So I've been doing amazing with all the starting pitchers lately, but not so much in this game. I'm able to get the GOAT on the ground out right there. So now the steroid junkie, he was once considered the GOAT from myself when he first came in. Even had him on the mound in a couple games, and he did pretty solid when he was on the mound. And I failed too in the last... I think in the last game he was a he was still uh, left-handed because when I use him as a pitcher I'm I keep him left-handed and then when I move him back to the field or something I move him back to right-handed so it was just hilarious watching that video again and I was like holy shit I didn't even move this steroid junkie back to a right-hander so I had a left-handed second baseman he was still doing good over there he has amazing fielding and stuff too so he's not going to make any errors so yeah Kelvin Herrera was in. And somebody who I haven't used in a really long time because all these games I've been playing in the past week or so, they have not been close. I haven't even uh, needed to use Rodney, but he came in and he shut the door as well. Grady Sizemore is 0 for 2 in this game. And then in his third at bat, he's just flying out to left field. So Grady held off the fucking scoreboard so far in this game. That is not good. When Grady is held off the board, I mean, that's usually that's usually exactly what happens when I lose games when Grady Sizemore, ever since Grady Sizemore made the debut, the only times I've been losing is when Grady Sizemore hasn't been in the lineup or when he just did bad. So he's 0 for 3, but that does only mean 1-3. He is due. He will at least be up one more time since it is the top of the seven, so for sure he was going to be back up again. Unless I was able to take the lead and then maybe he wasn't able to get up in the bottom of the ninth or something. But I was planning on coming back and taking the lead. Rodney still doing work on the mound, man. That circle change is just unhittable at times, if you ask me. Like, I would rather face lefties with that Rodney, to be honest, man. Because you just drop in those circle changes away from the plate. They just die out of the strike zone and they are almost impossible to hit sometimes. But A-Rod, he was squeezing A-Rod all game, giving him that inside shit, not able to do anything with it. And then Arenado, he has been heating up lately. He has been heating up a lot lately. Like, he got two base hits in every single game since he's come back in the lineup. But what is that? That shit is still going on. What is this? That BS needs to end, man. That shit screws you over so much. That is very annoying. That shit needs to end immediately. And then in the ninth, he's coming out with a base hit. So, this is not... Wait, this is the 8th. Yeah, this is... What am I even saying? This is the 8th. He's coming up with a base hit. Reggie Stalker, I was able to keep quiet this game, which was a surprise because that is another guy lately who has just been killing me at the plate. And I'm able to get him swinging to end that inning. So, going into the bottom of the 8th, I'm putting in Cepeda as a pinch hitter because he put in a lefty. And Cepeda has very good power versus lefties. 91 or 92 or something. He's been somebody who has been golden off the bench as well. Comes in, gets another hit off the bench. So now something needs to be done. Grady is 0 for 3. I'm facing the lefty. I don't give a shit. He's staying in the game. I don't even care. Lefty on lefty murder from Grady right there. That is a line drive bullet to right field. So now I got two guys on base and Ted Williams is up again. A lefty didn't give a shit. I've been doing amazing with Ted Williams against lefties to be honest. But look at this. Q shot. Off the end of the bat. It's looking good. Williams is going to run that out safe, right? Wait a minute. What? What did this game is broken? What is that BS? The Zebra over there at first base called him safe. Everybody saw that. Safe by a mile I was too. What is this? This game is broken. That is bullshit. I don't even know what I'm seeing, man. That could have been bases juiced for Prince Fielder. And then fucking A-Rod would have been up. This is crazy. This is just getting screwed over 101 in MLB. I was safe. It doesn't even matter if I was, wasn't was safe there. Why would the Zebra say safe? Screwing me over and shit, man. I was jacked up. 
when I thought Williams was able to make it to first base. No, not safe. It looked like I was safe by a million feet too. So that is just un. That is that's insane. That's the only word to describe that is just insane and weird. I guess you could use as well. But going into the ninth. I don't know, man. After that shit, I just felt like everything was just fall. It was just gonna, yeah. Everything was just gonna crumble. Once that shit happened, A-Rod goes down on strikes. Now there's two down, so Arenado is my only hope. He's my last hope. And first pitch swinging at something up in the strike zone. I'm getting jammed. That is a weak fly right to the catcher. So what is this guy turned this game into a moonshot squad of his own? I mean, he did have three home runs, all of them solo shots. This guy... This guy goes out here with the humongous head, the humongous cranium on his shoulders, goes out there and then just uh, embarrasses me.